Hey, it's Craig, WJ6F. Today's video, we're going to be talking about TID Radio's new version of the TDH-8, the second generation. They've done quite a few changes, and we're going to go over them right after this. There's a few different kits on Amazon, so what you get in your box may differ. In this one, you get the antenna, owner's manual, bell clip, 2500 milliamp hour battery, wrist strap, the radio itself, USB charging for the battery, a cradle, and a customer service card. Okay, starting with the left side, you have the push to talk button. These two are programmable. On the top, you have your antenna and antenna connector. This button is also programmable. Some use it for an emergency. You have your pseudo flashlight and the power knob with volume, your screen, VFO memory, Bluetooth, and to select A or B channel. And then you have your tin keypad and it gets you into the menu, exit the menu. Now on the right side, you have K connector for microphones or programming cables. Of course, since this radio is Bluetooth, you will not need a programming cable. And we will get to how to program this via Bluetooth shortly. They did a good job with this owner's manual. It's written well, simple to understand. You don't need an engineering degree and you don't need a translator. They give you good descriptions on things like all the items that you'll see on the screen. Explanations of the keys. They show you how to download the Bluetooth software for programming the radio, and we'll get to that a little later. How all the menu items work. As well as what the menu items look like and what each one does, again, and gives you the menu number. Then they also give you the DCS codes and the CTCSS codes. Okay, on the menu, just go ahead and hit the menu button. You start off with squelch, and there's a total of 43 items on here. If you want to change it, hit the menu again, then use your up and down arrows to change it whichever way you want. Reset the squelch to three. The step, we'll put it two and a half. You just go up and change all the things you want to. I turn the beep off. I also turn the voice off. And you can choose if you want Chinese or English on the voice. Here you have your receive CTCSS. And before that you had your receive DCS. Then you go into the transmit versions of the DCS and the CTCSS. This is the voice. You just go through this is how you want it to display if you want the frequency, the name. We'll leave it at name. Your busy lock. This is for your direction of the repeater. If your minus, your plus, or none. Your offset. This so you can input a memory and you can also delete memories from the front. You can seek CTCSS codes as well as DCS codes. If you want a Roger beep, here's where you change your English your language from English or Chinese. And when you go into Chinese, it will change not just what you hear, but it'll change the writing as well. And you can reset the VFO. That's how you turn your sync on. And it gives you the version. Then to get out, just hit exit. Okay, the first thing you're going to do is you're going to go to your app store and you're going to want to download the Oddmaster app. Once you have it done, go ahead and open it. Go down here at the bottom to program. Make sure you turn the Bluetooth on on the radio. 
you'll see the Bluetooth logo show up right here above the word off. You're going to connect the Bluetooth. Once that's done, you're going to select your model. And in this case, a TID radio. And they have three different kinds. You have the ham, GMR's version, and unlock. And you can save each one of these. So if you move around from one to the other, you'll never have to reprogram the whole thing. Just upload it from your phone. We're going to use the unlock version. Then you're going to read from the radio. And once you have that, you can choose what you want to store. First one we're going to do, we're going to do channel two. I'm going to put in the national calling frequency, 146-520. You see it automatically fills it in on the transmit. You don't have to worry about decoder encode because this is a, this is a simplex. Choose your power, wide or narrow. If you want the busy log, push talk ID. You can change the name. Once you're done, hit done. And go up to the next one, we'll do 15. And that one is 145220. And this one we have a negative offset. So for this one, the transmit frequency is going to be 144620. Then you're going to go down. And we're going to use 103.5 as our PL tone. We're going to keep a power at high. And everything else will keep the same. Change the name. And then hit done once you're all done. You can go over to function, and this is where you'll change how you set up the actual radio. Like on this one, we want, let's say we want this always on, when we click it on, we want it at the national calling frequency, which is 146520. You go down and change the squelch level to three. We'll keep the voice prompt at English. Light control, we have that on constant. We'll turn the voice off. Timeout timer, we'll do two minutes. It gives you all the regulars. We'll turn the beep off. This is where you change the keys on the side. Like on the bottom one, we'll turn that one into weather. Top, we can either leave a monitor, we can ch change it to the radio. We'll put it for radio. And then you can short press them. So we have the flashlight for the short press, weather, for the short press on bottom, the long, we'll do monitor, and yeah, we'll leave radio on there. And on the top, we will do alarm. Now you can change your power on message, not sure how to go about actually putting a picture or anything in there, but I'm sure it can be done. You'll probably have to use a computer software. Has your Vox stuff, not gonna worry about that. 
how you want it to display and we want name on the top we'll leave frequency on the bottom for channel B and then once you have everything done you can save it and then once you save it go ahead and write go ahead and write it to the radio which is what we're doing now and you can see on the radio it's acting accordingly Okay, so it's all done. Now I'll switch over to VFO or back into memory. And there you can see it switched to the name. And then since we have it synced, you can see the frequency up here under channel 15. Go down to channel 2, national call, and there it is. And that's all there is for using the software to program this radio. It's actually very simple. It makes life a lot easier, a lot quicker. You're not messing with cables and changing software. You can do this from anywhere. Okay, to program this radio from the front end, it's actually very simple to do. First thing you want to do, make sure you're in VFO. Enter the frequency you want, in this case, 147.060. Once you got that, go into the menu and you're going to go to item number 13, and that's your CTCSS. Hit menu to change it, and again, remember you can hold this down to get where you want. We need 100. Once you got it, lock it in. Then you're going to go to menu item number 23. This is your direction. Go ahead and change that, and we want positive. Then you're going to go to 24, set your offset, since this is 2 meter, you want 0, 0, 0.6, lock that in and go up to 25, and this is where you're going to choose the channel you want. And we want to store it in item number 10. Lock it in. And you're all set. Now to put the name in, you're going to have to use the computer or the Bluetooth. Go back out to memory, and you can see in number 10, we have it set up. That's all there is to it for programming it with the phone, the Bluetooth system, as well as programming it from the front end. Now that we've programmed everything using the phone through Oddmaster and from the front end, let's see if we can't hit the Clara repeater. WJ6F testing. Oh, we definitely hit it. Looks like everything's properly programmed. Okay, this radio is claimed to be a 10 watt radio, and we're going to try that out. We're going to start with 146.520 on low power. And so far we're getting 7 tenths of a watt. Now let's try medium power. And we're at three and a half watts. And now we'll try high power. And we're only at six watts. Not quite the 10 watts that the radio claims to be. Now we'll try 146, or correction, 446. Bring that down to low. And it's not even budging. Okay, let's try medium power right quick. And we're at 2 watts on medium. And high power. And we're not even at 5 watts. This is definitely a long way off from 10 watts. Okay, we've got the Tiny SA Ultra all hooked up to the TDH8. I have the frequency at 146.52 and the power set to low. Now let's see if there's any harmonics on this. Make sure it's in compliance with the FCC. We see the fundamental rising there. It's going to settle down for a little bit. Now 
You know, this radio actually looks like it's clean. I'll start with what I do like about the radio. I think it's nice and affordable. It's easy to program. You have three ways of programming. You can program it from the front, Bluetooth, or via computer. It seems sturdy. I think it's a great radio for hiking, fishing, camping, what have you. I do like the display. However, I think the bright sunlight will interfere with that. What I don't like is the power. The website said it's supposed to be up to 10 watts, and we weren't even close to that. It was also nice to see that this particular radio had clean harmonics. I really appreciate you taking the time to watch this video. If you have any comments, questions, or concerns, please leave them in the comments section below. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe and don't forget to click on the bell so you'll be notified each time I upload a video. If you'd like to help support the channel, there's a Patreon link in the description area. And while you're here, why don't you check out one of these other videos? And again, thanks for watching.